I saw something in my building today, very disturbing sight that I haven't seen in a long time. I saw a father and son mullet team. The father, <laughs> this is true. The father, that's his business, but the kid doesn't even know he's wearing a mullet, and he's out there with a mullet. <laughs> if that's not child abuse, I don't know, but unless the mullet is making a comeback, which is also fine with me. I used to rock the mullet. I'd be ready. <laughs> you see that old video. I'm ready to push it back. Now, the other thing that in our society of phoniness and bah, is, did you see that hot teacher? She was having sex with a 14-year-old guy, and she said it turned her on because it was so wrong. Now, that's, first of all, is an amazing woman. Said it turned her on because it was wrong. Not I did the worst thing because I could, the worst reason. I know. And she, I like her. She's defiant. She's like, I, but then they had a psychiatrist on saying people think it's okay because it's a boy, but actually it could damage him. And she goes, how could some interviewer goes, how could it damage him? Well, he could get a twisted view of male female relationships, as opposed to the rest of us who have a healthy view of male. <laughs> At least this little bastard has a great story to tell for the rest of his life, you know? People go, but it's still child abuse. No, it's not. No, it's not. How's that? It's the exact opposite of child abuse. Have they really done a study on the effects of a hot teacher having sex with a 14-year-old boy? <laughs> now, why do we get the feeling this kid is going to be more emotionally stable and happier than me in his later years? Good, we got a couple of college football guys on here, too. <laughs> a bench is Buddy Bolton. Buddy, keep looking like Luke Perry and you'll get in. Now listen. Oh Shut your mouth. That was a great reference. You don't drink water. When I'm making a great one, you go, oh boy, Kyle really nailed it. And you know you're going to probably put that in your act. I know you people think I'm the best instead of Luke Perry and some hack reference that you and Sherrod come up with. Now listen. <laughs> There's a new documentary called The N-Word airing Saturday on the Trio Network. Here's a clip. I was in uh, Tower Records when I heard these guys. Yeah, this nigga said so and so to me, and that nigga said blah, blah, blah. I turned around the aisle, and it was a bunch of white guys. There's always been an element in the white community of enjoying black people demeaning themselves. We've taken this word that's been, been a burden to us, and we've been able kind of to digest it, spit it back out as more of a, uh, a badge of honor. Black people didn't think nigga. That was thrown at us. And then all of a sudden, us accepting it is like somebody just catching garbage and loving it. Now, I think it would be disingenuous for me to start with anybody but you, Mr. Todd Lynn. Oh. <laughs> when you see a documentary like this, and I, yes, I may have misused disingenuous, I'm sorry. But that's the only thing I can imagine it could mean. I can't imagine what else it could be. He doesn't know what it means. Anyways, Todd, listen to me. <laughs> Todd, what do you think about this documentary? What do you think about the use of that word? Do you care? No, honestly, I don't give a damn. The, truthfully, you can say nigga all you want. I mean, it's really all in the context. And the reason I feel like that is I feel like it's done change. You know, the words change. You know, I don't care. And if say nigga, feel free. No, nigga, but that's not nigga. the point. Don't get them. <laughs> Let's I mean, not make it to a national thing. You don't have thing. to ask me twice. Yeah, yeah. we. we... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, no, well, no. I think it changed. No, let, let me let me explain. Right, let me explain. Right, you know the context you're saying it in. Bottom line right. is, if you look at me and say, my nigga. You know, what's right. happening? You know, but if Nick, which he'll probably say later on during the show, no. shut up, nigga, then, <laughs> you know. He never right. does that. It, 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 it does him. sound different. You got to admit, like, black people say it, they go, nigga. It sounds nigga. Right. It sounds okay. But white people say it, it's always like, goddamn shiftless nigger. Yeah. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds My different. Exactly. It just My sounds a different. Sometimes you have to say it. Wait, wait, go, go ahead. What? No, like, if I don't say it, I, I mean, I don't know my doorman's name, so how am I supposed to get it? <laughs> no, but the bottom... <laughs> But here's the point. Here's the, but here's What's one of the points. Point? One of the points is you can't have, it's impractical in society to have a word that is used so much that it's actually on album covers and songs. If you're a white kid, you, when you're growing up, you want to buy a, an album, you have to say NWA. You can't even say what song you were listening to. So if the word is going to be out there, it can't be 10% of the population that uses it. That's weird. I you know? was called... I, Either everybody says it or nobody. Go ahead. When I was a kid, I get very dark in the summertime, and, and I was called nigger all the time from first to fifth grade. I get in fights, and every time I went to school, they called me nigger. Yeah. It didn't help that my mother sent me there in a purple suit and a full-length fur coat. <laughs> They did. They call me nigger all the time. So I kind of feel I can actually... I don't, I don't have any problem with people being called. You know, think about it. You, uh, Mick, Wop, 
uh, spit. There you go, stupid. It's, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not. But you know what? There's, it's but what you were saying. <laughs> you know, white people are. It, it, it gets get a little old when white people are like. But we should be allowed to say it. We should be allowed to say it. Because you got to admit, I think that underneath it all, there is an inherent sort of power struggle where white people just just. And it's a little racist. White people don't want to be told they can't use certain words by coloreds. You know, <laughs> they don't. They don't like it. You know, and, white, and, and any white people that tell you, if any white people tell you that they, they don't, they've never used the word nigger. They've never bet a thousand dollars in an NBA playoff game. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, let me make another point here. See, the thing is, is that words like nigger are, can be used to really get up under your skin. Like, you know, but white people, y'all don't have any, you know, you... Cracker. Crack, no, that no, don't work. You, know, you go cracker, anybody. y'all be like, whatever, give me some soup with that. You know, it's like... <laughs> but you st I still say it doesn't matter. The point is, on the one hand, you say, it gets under our skin. It's just, you don't have a word like that. We don't have any words that are forbidden for black people to say to us. That's because you abused your nigger privileges a long time ago. <laughs> oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A long time ago. When's the last time anybody called you nigger? Huh? Well, I'm 250 pounds. Nobody ever called no. anybody. Let me tell you something. Right. I grew up in Brooklyn, and I've heard, I heard the word frequently, usually for just cause. I tell you right now, You're nobody Irish. used the word nigger after 1974. <laughs> Buddy, get in here. You're, You're a kind of liberal. Ready? Yeah. Buddy. Well, geez, you're walking over like a cowboy, for Christ's sake. <laughs> what are you on, Teddy? Buddy, do you watch the show? You're supposed to stand next to me. Get oh, sorry, here. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't kick anybody off. You're right. You're actually right. Now, buddy, you're the example of a guy. All your friends are black that I've seen. Okay. You're a guy that's a white guy. Yeah. Do you feel you should be able to say, you know, Sherrod, what's up? You know. I think it's uh, wrong and morally repulsive to use the word uh, outside. Outside the house? Yeah. Well, it's dangerous. I don't know what's morally wrong. You know what's racist, buddy? Uh, you having a chain on your wallet and there's a black guy near you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, you, and you're having a belt buckle like you, that and there's no Dominicans on you the know show. What the funny thing is I hate when white guys, when you start talking about nigga, you go, you go, the it, well, stop, white woman. Because we don't want to get, I don't want to use the word. And you don't want to get censored for saying the word nigger on no, the show. I, I, I agree with you. I'm just shouldn't. saying, if you don't lean back, yeah, but lean back. But also, you've taken the fun out of it. They've taken the fun out of the word. They've used it. It's true. It's just what, like, what, uh, what Ice Cube was saying. You've co-opted the word and forced us what into other words, like bone and spook and yeah. jig. And, but you know, no, here's, here's a... We've had I to go spin, into I, different... I, I, here's here's a good point. We can't this, call women bitches and hoes no more, because you, you ruined it. Yeah, we really messed that up. We really messed that up. No, my point to say is this, right? You say, you always go, oh, the N-word, the N-word. Just say nigga. It's not like uh, you say nigga and a black guy gonna teleport into your living room. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, you can't say that word, you know. Well, it's let's not be innocent. Go ahead. It's understandable that white people shouldn't say it. And it's not a question whether black people. I, I'm just curious about why Latinos say it so much now, too. <laughs> because the point is, if words in the culture, everybody right. either says it or nobody says it. Right. It's phony, I and you have to, to buy an NWA. I have to, agree I have to say Nick. NWA. I mean, I okay, I'm old, hey, NWA. He's agreeing with listen. Yeah. I got No, I have to agree with you, Kyle. I think you should all say it. But I think that you should still be able to suffer the ramifications of saying it under some circumstances. Well, I, always, I always make... I always, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine with me. Doesn't it depend on your intention? Huh? I no, it's context. You know I, I, never I, thought, I never thought I'd agree with a guy with no forehead, but I, <laughs> but I agree with what he said. I think that's true. You know how it's being used. I always and, uh, it's your intention. I call the insurance company, make sure I'm covered before I use it. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Last year, close to 800 soldiers were discharged from the military because they were gay. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Pentagon maintains that openly gay and les lesbian personnel disrupts the unit cohesion. What do you guys think about that? I don't think they should be in the military uh, because, first of all, they don't throw that well. I don't think... Uh... <laughs> I don't think 20 soldiers should die because Bruce's grenade toss landed a foot from the bunker. 
No. You know what? They, no, no, you they, know, I'm no honestly, man, come on. No, you're they not kidding. You believe that. They should be able to openly serve. You ever seen gay dudes? You ever seen the muscles on them, dude? You ever, no, no, I haven't. You still ever see how cut they are? Where do you go? They don't got to be their protein you know, intake. But they say it disrupts. Well, they say it's women. distracting and it disrupts morale. But if anything, the don't ask, don't tell is it's got to disrupt morale more than anything. Because, you know, we, if you have gay friends that aren't out, that won't admit to being gay, there's nothing more. You waste so much energy trying to play along with their charade of heterosexuality. Right. And they're like, right. me and my girlfriend went to dinner last night. And they're like, oh. All right. Lynn, really? That's right. Lynn, what do you think? Could you serve with a bunch of Leslie's? <laughs> I really don't want to go into the military, but um, no, I mean, I would. I think there should be a gay unit. That would be more like it. Like a rainbow unit. Yeah, because, but it's true. It's and a then, but, but then wouldn't, like, Afghanistan be really pissed if we sent the rainbow? Like, we, we hate you so much, we're going to send the gays Exactly. To get you. This is the point that kills me. Everybody yeah. says, oh, it's fine. But if you're a young guy, you join the military, you know, you go out there trying to be like a macho badass, yeah, it's gonna, you're, if you see a gay guy in the unit, they're gonna beat the balls off him. They, because they don't want him naked around him, they don't want him to shower around him. Well, That's just they, a fact. Dude, they the muscle-bound gay dudes will hurt you. But they, what I'm talking about... Not only that, but unit cohesion. I mean, who's more cohesive than two gay men? They should serve openly because... Oh, sorry. Stop. I'm done. Right. Yeah. They should serve openly. Is that like Jake LaMotta? Are you done, honey? Yeah, done over so there. You got a hamburger. You got what you want. Because the way it's set up now, um, you, they're going to start faking they're gay. If things get real rough in Iraq, I mean, if I got wounded, I wouldn't be asking for a purple heart. You know, I'd be asking for, like, a purple handbag and shoes to match. <laughs> you use an excuse to get out. No, also, look, but nobody's trying to serve. And, I mean, you know, this is not, like, a, this is wartime. Nobody's tr trying to serve. We're losing a lot of people. Like, they, they lost, like, eight linguists who are gay, which linguist, by the way, is Latin for tongue, so you know the lesbians are pretty good at that. <laughs> right. We're losing a lot of people with special skills. Some of the greatest soldiers, Alexander the Great, was gay. I'm not denying that, but, but I'm just saying that ultimately you can't expect there to be a not. Uh, you can't live in an unreal world where people are not going to get their ass kicked and get you know possibly. Some like, of these guys are homophobic. Some of these guys, are, the, the guys in the soldier, they come right from a farm. They've never even seen a gay pe person. They don't even have sex with male farm animals. That's how homophobic they are. <laughs> I but mean, they gotta, just it's, but, but they you know, adjust. It really I mean, doesn't I, matter who. I mean, I don't care if it's a gay guy, uh, uh, a straight guy shooting at the other people. As long as somebody's shooting, and I'm not getting shot. I don't care. If they gay enough. Right, but I'm just saying, if you're in the army... Yeah, you would out, care. If you're yeah, lying in the, the bunk... Even you if you're in the care. army with a gay dude, it's not If you fall like... asleep one night, you think your girlfriend's there, you have a heart on, then the next thing you know, you get <laughs> but you don't realize it's a gay guy, you wake up the next... <laughs> buddy, come here for a second, buddy. <laughs> gay buddy. men don't just go and <laughs> people randomly. Yes, they do. You do. <laughs> buddy, introduce the next subject you and run the show. You are an idiot. All right. Hang out with Chelsea for like three hours. Shut up and let Buddy do the next topic. I'm tired of seeing men portrayed as hapless, beer-drinking idiots on TV shows and in commercials. A 40-year-old New Hampshire man has launched a Society for the Prevention of Misandry in the media. Misandry is the opposite of misogyny. What do you guys think about that? I like white people looking stupid. I'm getting off in there. <laughs> Yeah. Why would they clap? Yeah. You know, Miss Andre was the name of a gay soldier I knew. <laughs> okay. You've got to have something to say about this, Nick. Well, yeah, I've, I've been preaching this crap for eight years on stage, and this guy writes a book, and he's making money. I'm down at the cellar in front of ten people preaching this crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, geez, how can you deny this? Have you ever gone to Hollywood? We've been there. We've had deals in Hollywood. You know who runs it? Angry gay women. They hate men with a passion. Every meeting I took in L.A., everybody was wearing flannel shirts, work boots, five, <laughs> five o'clock shadow. They hate men. That's but, not true. It is true, and Gay I'll, men run it, too. Yeah, no, and they, no, really, and no, they no, love no, straight no. guys like me. I know like this me. personally. Every person you go to meet with, is a, it's either a gay man or it's gay a woman. gay mad woman, and you can't even say the word gay in the damn meeting. I mean, they... They like say gay and see if you. Every, I'm telling you. Well, you're talking about their portrayal. You're talking about say their portrayal gay. in advertising things, say right? Gay. Because yeah. that's the kind of thing where like the guy is always a bumbling fool. And if right. they could never do that, you could never do it with a woman. If you ever showed a woman with her family shopping in the supermarket and she tried to buy something, the whole family was like, "Duh, you're an idiot." You know. I mean, but wait a minute. You know, you complaining time. about this, but how many times have I seen you know black people dancing and selling chicken? I don't appreciate this either. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <It's a> chicken. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. 
Yeah. What year were yeah. you talking about? Yeah, 1950? Who the hell are you kidding me? I was a president. Let me let me explain something. I remember when that chicken thing. Wait a minute. I was watching. I was watching. What is it? A Taco Bell commercial? And Hammer was dancing around. Get your tacos. Get your tacos. We just finished Gay Pride Week here in New York, and we sent our own Nick DiPaolo out to get a first-hand look at all the pride. <laughs> Thanks for the assignment, Colin. Let's roll the clip, shall we? We're here at Gay Pride Week, and as usual, they're kicking it off in uh, a low-profile way. If you're not used to it, get into it, baby. Get into get it. Get the full shot here, will you? What a... Holy... This is a girl I went to prom with in high school. What's up, fella? What's this uh, fruit mobile get to the gallon? We deserve a voice and a spot in the world, and we deserve a chance to be heard, and it's great to march. Oh, you're being heard in that outfit. Brazil can hear you. Why would you go to women? They have more to look at. Well, I'm not gonna argue with that. If I did, I'd be gay. <laughs> did you need a lot of attention as a kid? No, I did not. No. Not at all. What did you need as a kid that you didn't get? A man. You needed a man as a kid? Well, there's a church right across the street. I won't say which one. Apparently, Bill Coughlin's taking the New York Giants in a different direction this year. It's like the Sex in the City float and the Sopranos float had a collision. When did you realize you were gay? When I first saw your face. There's even a gay dog here. That dog has to be gay. Sarah Jessica Parker. She's got to kill time between gigs. Hey, how are you? Midler's gone to hell, huh? Wow. I don't want to say there's a lot of gay stuff on network TV. That's the new NBC Peacock. <laughs> Holy Jesus. What's up, buddy? What's your name? What's, what's... Jamie, tell me what's up. I'll tell you what ain't up, Jamie. Okay. Jamie, uh, first question. I think I'm going to break through this. Are you gay? Very much. Uh, when did you realize you were gay? Actually, I'm not gay. I'm human. Oh, I've been human all my life. Well, if you're human, you sleep with men, women, men or women. No, no, that's if you're drunk. It says, uh, lick Bush on your pen? Yeah. What? Now, are you voting for Bush, or is that what you're gonna do after the parade? What are some of the benefits? Being what being gay and being black and being Republican. You're Republican? It's a pig's pork. <laughs> I'm, I'm Republican, too. Okay. All right, we vote the same. Just in different booths. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Nick, that was a beautiful piece. Now, was there anybody there, any guy that was really feminine that got you a little like, uh, you know what I mean, if nobody's looking? Anything? <laughs> How about some of the lesbians? Did you think they were kind of hot? Oh, lesbians are always hot. Well, there's like, always a couple of hot ones, right? Well, not always hot, but yeah, a couple look like firemen, but yeah, I like yeah. I like lesbians. Were there any of those lesbians that were there for the pleasure of women, but you were looking at them too? And did you feel like, wow, I'm getting a free thing? What would that thing be? Yes. I don't know. It's something that only like a 10-year-old kid like myself would think. A free peak? I don't know. Okay. I didn't understand the question. You I didn't understand the question I thought we had either. two seconds. Well, we were just kind of screwing around. I thought it was going to be shorter, but I should have left after the first laugh, and now here we are in the usual state. <laughs> and they're waiting for me to say the closer, but I'm not going to say the closer. We're just going to have to cut for once without a stupid closing where we say we'll be right. I'm not going to say it. So just... <laughs> Folks, Fahrenheit 9-11 shows how a hit movie can be made out of one fat guy's anti-Bush feelings. Describe the anti-somebody movie you would make. Nick. My movie would be about Michael Moore. It would be called My Wet Dream. 
It would be him in an orange jumpsuit, blindfolded, shackled, and kneeling down in front of four militant Muslims who are wearing masks, holding AK-47s, and reading in Arabic a glowing review of his movie as he sits there bawling his eyes out. And you can uh, guess the end. All right. Lynn. Lynn, yes. My movie would be anti-Anna Nicole Smith, and the movie would be her television show in its entirety from season one, and it would be called No Matter How Much Money You Have or How Thin You Get, You're Still a Kind of Sad, Hoary Girl from Texas Who blew an Old Guy on Oxygen. Oh! All right! Todd! Kyle, my documentary will be about New York living spaces. It will be called My Landlord, the Jackass. Um, <laughs> the movie would be about how she rationalizes raising the rent on my 75-foot square apartment, where it's so small I can take a dump, fried chicken, and shower without ever leaving the comfort of my futon, which, <laughs> which the bottom half sits on my fire escape. I, <laughs> I think this movie would be clearly show why the SNL sketch Kill My Landlord by Eddie Murphy is a masterpiece in American theater. Okay. Great. I, I would like to make an anti-terrorist movie. I think terrorists are not nice people. And I'm starting to suspect terrorists might have been responsible for 9-11. I think they might be more to blame than even Bill Clinton or Saddam Hussein or even Dick Cheney. I'd call the movie Celsius 911 to be more inclusive of our coalition allies who are smelly foreigners. That's the show. Good night. Uh, you have time, time, for, time for a couple questions? Okay. Uh, You've sent Nick up to Harlem, and uh, now you've sent him to cover the, the gay march. Uh, yeah. What about the dynamic makes for good comedy, do you think? Well, you know, Nick, he's just a very quick guy. He's quick on the feet. Doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, people are drawn to him naturally. And, uh, where, do you, where do you think you could send him next? Where, what else? Uh... Oh, please, don't go there. <laughs>